back again. Um, 2nd of August I have received two bows. One of them is the KTB that has been reviewed yesterday and the Zeljuk that uh, will be reviewed now. And um, I managed to string this wonderful looking bow um, on, yeah it was a Tuesday, but uh, it was not easy for me because um, you, you won't or should not grab here, but here. And so the bending length, that is, I can tell you up front, is shorter than for the KTB. All right, uh, let's go into the details of the specifications of this beauty. Um, it's the Zeljuk monolithic um, technology. Um, means that we have uh, artificial material here inside. I come to the materials in a bit. The length from knock to knock unstrung is 54.5 inches. Strung it's 5 inches less, 49.5. Brace height is 8.25 uh, inches. Um, Arrow pass has a width of 24 millimeters and the weight is 420 gram. Um, let's string. The strength nominal is 37 pounds at 28 inches. Uh, we will check how much we have in the moment because today again in the moment we have 22% humidity. Okay, then there are two ways uh, of the step through method and uh, I, from my go away you think um, my personal taste is uh, to have the upper bottom up, uh, but let's see. So, I will focus a lot, so I'll be quiet for a moment. First attempt. Um, the other option I have seen is uh, that you have here bottom up and you make sure that you grab the string here and then go through like this and then uh, I would need to... Um, <laughs> I won't reach the other knock, uh, so this is simply not working for me. Uh, so there is no option. Even there, no. Because I cannot bend that much, I would bend the bow. So I need to do it uh, the way I always do it. Um, I managed it myself alone on Tuesday. How did I do it? We have currently 33 degrees Celsius. Okay. The next day will be hotter. The next days will be hotter. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. 
okay. So I've just talked to a friend this morning getting um, weights for um, weights for for um, for this uh, five kilo weights. <laughs> I should train with them as well. <laughs> so I need a bar um, to get more strength. Okay. Next attempt. the Seljuk it's not so easy <sighs> but you are rewarded <laughs> with a very nice bow <sighs> okay here we are <laughs> now I need to check if I've misaligned something so. This was the hardest part. Everything is now more easy. Yeah, so what do we see here? We have already explained um, specs and um, what you can see is, yeah, as it is shown or visible to the eye, but there is more. Um, so first of all, a bit uh, history very short in a few sentences. Um, the Zeljuks um, have been um, uh, raised their power in the 10th century to beginning 13th. So um, they have been um, quite successful for uh, three dynasties are mentioned uh, <coughs> during that time frame and uh, on Wikipedia, maybe there are more. And uh, these dynasties had um, heraldic sign it was the double-headed eagle and this double-headed eagle you can see here yeah. and um, the decoration the artist has brought onto this bow is extraordinary so i've asked uh, lukas navalny um, about the name of the um, the artist and it's Marius and I know I need to look it up because I'm not so familiar with Polish names. It's Marius Kodraciuk. I hope that I pronounce it correctly. So, um, but the bow is not only built by him, he was the one who has painted. Um, the bow is built by a whole team with Lukas Navalny as master chef. Okay, yeah, so he's the master of disaster. And um, regarding materials, um, again, I will uh, read it here from my notes because uh, it's quite specific. Yeah. So here in the limbs we have uh, one millimeter wood and the rest are synthetic materials. Um, we have here in the Zias um, an ultra lightweight wood, which is two times lighter than ash um, with carbon and bare pore glass. We have tips that are reinforced with uh, uh, phenolic, stabilized, uh, phenolic and stabilized wood and the wood is curly birch. You can see it here. So very beautiful. Furthermore, in the handle uh, we will ha have ash. Uh, we cannot see it, but it's there. Um, covered with a durable leather. So this leather, I come closer and you hear it. Or here. Yeah, it's a bit rough, so you have a good grip. And um, the basic of the Zeljuk bow is that you have from approximately here to there the Turkish bow and then uh, Mongolian-styled Zias. So these are extremely long, 
for a Turkish bow. And um, yeah, that's uh, what the Zeljuk is about. And you can shoot it, uh, of course, whatever style you like. But um, I will shoot the Turkish style since I'm quite familiar with this one. Um, the string. The string is Dyneema, Dyna Flight 97. And uh, what else to say? Um, I mentioned the weight, um, bending length, uh, 39.5. And uh, for a long bow like this, it's not much. And um, I have similar bows of similar strength. Um, for example, my horn bows, but these horn bows have a groove here on the tips where I can add um, a stringing band. And so I don't string it with a strap through method, but string it that way. And um, this is much more easier than the step through method with this one. So um, if you think, um, let's say, 45 pounds is no problem for me to pull, that's fine, but mind that this bending length here is shorter and you shall not grab here. Yeah? You have a shorter bending length and it's more difficult to string. All right, strength, just where I mentioned it. So we have here 28 inches. Currently we have 39.66, another attempt, it's always measure, measure here at the back, 39.9, so roughly nearly 40 pound. Um, so that's uh, quite typical, even if you have artificial materials in your bow, the bow reacts to environment. In this case, it's not much. So um, humidity, since I have not uh, kept this measurement tool open uh, outside the whole night, it's just been out for a few minutes and you see that humidity is falling down. So, but uh, since Lukasz is living in Poland, uh, which has approximately the same climate conditions, there is not much of a difference. Okay, what else? Um, with the bow came um, this nice sleeve with all Lukas Navalny bows. You received something like, something like this. And um, of course, the warranty card. Right, and because a bow is fine, but you need a quiver, I have created a quiver for this bow. As you can see here with a, a double-headed eagle, I have explained why. And um, this is uh, an Arcantos leaf, which has been uh, quite um, yeah, a favorite in ancient time as well. Yeah. And color matching somehow the bow. And that's the set. We will now shoot. So since we have just uh, found out the bow has today approximately uh, 40 pounds and for 40 pounds um, and with a recommended arrow weight of 12 grain per pound minimum according to Lukas would be 8. Um, I would be something in between um, 320 or 480 grain arrow. And mine has 443, which is then more than required. So I'm uh, on, the, on the safe side. Uh, the arrow has a length of 29.5 inches. And um, yeah, extra made for this bow. Um, the spine is uh, 600, it's a tapirin. And I think it will work well. Nevertheless, um, I'll take the first shots on a short distance. Showing you um, the handle. So here it's fitting nicely in my hand. Um, as we know it from uh, Turkish handles, it's nicely rounded. 
here see the details it's very nicely matching the hand all right I've not yet set a knocking point uh, and I will shoot with my uh, thumb ring from Bamboo Archery. So. Uh, I had a hard start with this ring, but uh, meanwhile it's working fine. First shots. shots. Whoa. So the, the bow is really stiff in the moment, but uh, I think he will warm up soon. Um, just by the way, the quiver is uh, quite uh, sleek, as you can see here, and that means even one arrow doesn't slide out, only if I want to. It. Body hit. The first one uh, was off, it was a bit below, I show you. Now the others at least one bit. One is in the center area. So currently I try um, to get a feeling for the bow and um, hitting the center is a bonus. <laughs> so I'm already happy if it works fine. So the bow needs a bit of warming up. So um, the shooting is very nice the, and the sound is very good. It's a dark sound um, very cool. <coughs> it's a bit below. <coughs> One might wonder why I have a quiver if I hold the arrows in the hand. Well, at the archery club it happened that an arrow got damaged and then I need a spare arrow. And since I like three in the hand more than four or five, it's uh, good to have a quiver. For me, it's important that it's matching the bow. But this is just me. Or other women, maybe. Or guys. A few. So uh, once the bow has been um, pulled a few times, or shot a few times, um, it's getting easier. So uh, the bow definitely needs a warming up. Yes. But it's uh, a very, um, is it a soft, a smooth draw? It's, um, let's say, round. I show you. You see? We have shot three rounds and uh, He's already doing very well. So that's the reason why Lukas said, well, this is a very special bow. It's working very, very nicely, or let's say excellently. And uh, yeah, I can confirm. Center shot. We are at the 10 meter line now. Yeah, another center. The 
that one was off. The bow shoots now very nice and he bends more easy. Although it's about 40 pounds. So this is about 11 meters. That looks like a center. That one is off. Another body hit. So uh, the bow shoots very nicely. Yeah, so this is just and I'm able to hold the bow and uh, we'll check in a bit about the speed. Uh, I'll fetch some arrows that are much lighter, for example 320 if I find them. And uh, then we see what the speed does. And um, yeah, I think that it's a fast bow. Okay, first uh, I shoot the heavy arrows with uh, 400, what did I say? Uh, 448 grain. Oh. Mm -hmm. It didn't measure. Why is it? Range. Hundred sixty five, hundred sixty seven point six, hundred sixty five point eight. So hundred sixty five and a bit. And this is quite much. Um, please consider that my um, draw length is about 28 inches. And if Lukas or his uh, team um, does a test, then they most likely have more draw length, more poundage, more speed. Now, next is the white weighted. These arrows uh, I found have uh, 322 and 23 uh, grain, 800 spines, so uh, I hope that I don't ruin something. Hundred seventy-eight point six. Uh, this. No. Hundred eighty five point eight. Um, this seems to be a strange 151. I think this one is not correct. I will do um, the same measurement again. Another attempt, first with the light weighted arrows. Hundred eighty four point five. Hundred seventy nine point nine, 
192.9. Wow, that's fast. And the heavy arrows. Hundred sixty seven point two hundred seventy three point four hundred sixty nine point zero. Um, that's really fast, even for the heavy arrows. Um, so far. I have not measured many bows, but this one has moment, in the moment top speed. So what about uh, vibrations? One, two, three, done, yeah. So you feel a bit vibration as you feel it in every bow. Yeah, so, so far I'm not aware of a bow if you pull the string that has not some kind of vibration. Don't remember. Um, this one feels very good. And oh, I destroyed here. Oh. Um, look what I have done. Mm. Um, luckily, I have some kind of ray skin in this color as well, so I can secure this area here with another dot. Mm. Okay, um, but shooting. So if I shoot, these are the light weighted. Um, yeah, it's possible. It doesn't feel like dry firing or so, or if it's too less, as Lukas said. But uh, after the shot, um, it's more prominent. You know, so you feel a little bit the vibration that I didn't recognize uh, with the heavier arrows, of course. But it's totally fine. No. Do you want to shoot uh, lighter arrows? This is no problem. Eight grain per pound, according to Lukas, you can have. Below it shouldn't. Uh, indeed, I feel a little bit of vibration here in the handle too. Uh, so from that point of view, it doesn't make a big difference. But uh, yeah. <laughs> It's really a nice bow. Cool. Oh dear. Resume. What do I think of the beautiful Seljuk by Lukas Navalny? Wow. So this is not only um, is it the most beautiful bow I have? I think it's the most um, astonishing painted bow I have. So the other, the Turkish monolith bow I have from Lukas Navalny is painted uh, in a similar, very excellent way. But this one is, I haven't seen it before. So this is unique and um, it's just mind blowing. Very nice. And the details that um, Marius had brought here in, this is really, really cool. So I draw myself and paint, but um, yeah, this is, wow. <laughs> I appreciate it a lot. And um, furthermore, performance wise, the bow is just excellent. Yeah, you have uh, seen how much speed I get out of it. So usually uh, my bows have around 160 feet per second and here we exceed it even with the heavier weighted ones. This is um, wow. 
the design is very beautiful. Um, I could do a comparison between this Zeyuk and the Hornbow uh, number 64, uh, which are somehow similar, but it's a bit unfair because the one is a Hornbow and this is a monolithic bow. But it would be interesting nevertheless. And um, what else? Stringing is for me difficult uh, because uh, the bending length is short and we, I need to overcome this length to get uh, the loop knocked in. Uh, but if I have done it a few times, the bow gives up or I get stronger. So this is uh, nothing that would keep me from shooting this very nice bow. Um, furthermore, yeah, I thought I can do better, so I've damaged the leather here completely. But Lukas, don't mind. Uh, I will repair it. There will be another piece set in and this will be fine. So the bow won't be damaged more. And uh, what else? Um, the coloring of uh, the serving is cool. So Lukas knows that uh, I, I really appreciate and love if the colors match. This is something, um, yeah, that always makes me smile. And to those who did not know, this is also painted. Yeah, so this is the horn effect painting and this is the arts painting. Uh, what else to say? Um, the weight is relatively high with 420 gram, um, but it's not too high. Yeah, I think this is full, totally okay. Yeah. And um, shooting experience is excellent. Yeah, the first shots need uh, were a bit stiff, but uh, now this is all due to poundage. Yeah. So yesterday um, the KTB had uh, 38 um, or 36, so something in between. It was a bit easier, but this one has 40. Um, we have here a huge lever. Uh, so uh, in contrast to the KTB, where we only have a small zier. And um, yeah, this is something you recognize and you see it in the speed. Now here we have much more speed uh, this, um, compared to the KTB, which has only a few pounds less compared to this one, and this bow is longer. Um, what else? This is what we call a fun shooter, so it's really joy shooting this bow, especially uh, if he accepts that we have now a training round and likes to bend, and this is really cool. Yeah, for those who have just thought, hmm, should I or should I not? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So if you, uh, if this is your first La Valle bow, um, and uh, you are new to archery, better get uh, the Saracen first. Uh, this one, as I said, is difficult to string. And um, my first bow I wanted to have from Lukas was the Zint bow. I don't see it in his portfolio anymore. I still think it's the uh, beautiful bow, but Lukas told me mm, this bow is very difficult to string, uh, he wouldn't recommend below 40 pounds uh, and so I was not ready for the bow. Maybe one day <laughs> if Lukas thinks okay I'm, I can do it another time, but so far I fully understand. So if the, the Zint bow is more difficult to string than uh, the Zeliuk, I fully understand and I appreciate a lot that you have recommended to get another bow. Thank you very much Lukas, uh, not only for your recommendations but also for this very nice bow and your team of course. Many many thanks and um, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, wish you a good start into the week and um, fingers crossed for our friends in Ukraine. Bye bye.